Peroni's disease likely affects 1 in 10 men at some point in his life. Peroni's disease is a chronic inflammation in the penis that results in bending of the penis with erections, penile shortening, and often erectile dysfunction. Stay tuned to learn about my current treatment approach and the latest scientific insights. My name is Dr. Stefan Buntrock and I'm a board-certified urologist and specialist in sexual health. In my office, I see many men with Peyronie's disease. If you have never heard of it before, it is because hardly any man talks about it in public. It is one of the greatest taboos. If you want to know more about the signs and symptoms, I am going to link a playlist at the end. But let's concentrate on my current treatment approach. It all starts with categorizing the patients into different groups. So my approach is anything but one size fits all. Basically, there are two categories, acute phase and stable phase. Acute phase usually denotes the first two years of the disease. Then the inflammation comes to rest and doesn't progress. This is called the stable phase. I treat these two categories differently. Within the two categories, I look for palpable versus non-palpable and calcified versus non-calcified plaques. Just to set things into perspective, standard of care would be surgery in the stable phase. But many men don't want that and they don't want to wait and see their penis bending 60, 70 or even 90 degrees. They want to actively do something. I personally don't think monotherapy is the best approach. As with many other diseases, combination therapy is likely more effective. We have some data on shock waves, ESWT, penile traction, PD5 inhibitors and platelet-rich plasma. The problem is that these are limited data and so far the large urological associations only recommend ESWT and ESWT is only recommended for the treatment of pain and not for curvature. About a month ago, an Italian study was published involving 153 men in the stable phase of Peyronie's disease. They were divided into two groups. Group 1 received shock waves, traction and tadalafil, whereas group 2 only received shock waves and tadalafil. To me, tadalafil is unclear as it is proposed that it decreases the inflammatory response of the body. But these were patients with stable disease with the inflammation long gone. However, end of the story was a significant decrease in plaque size, penile curvature, and increase in erectile ability in all patients, but it was much more pronounced when traction was added. I won't reveal what kind of traction was used because the YouTube algorithm hates that device, but I think it doesn't matter. There are many different traction devices on the market. When I read the study, there was another thing that I noted. The researchers didn't differentiate between calcified and non-calcified plaques. See, plaques become like stone when calcium is incorporated. This can be seen upon ultrasound. Calcified plaques are plain white and can't be missed. In my experience, calcifications are impossible to break with low intensity shock waves. High intensity shock waves are capable of breaking them, however. These are machines designed for the treatment of kidney stones. Hard to find nowadays, at least in my part of the world. So, where I hit the occasional jackpot is a man with non calcified plaques in the inflammatory phase of the disease. A combination of shock waves, tadalafil, antioxidants, peanut traction, and platelet rich plasma has shown to be effective but not in every man and not short term. You have to understand that we are looking at follow-up periods of six months and a year. It takes that long to show effects. This is what all studies confirm. Platelet-rich plasma or PRP is derived from the patient's own blood. Platelets are concentrated by special centrifugation and re-injected into the body, more specifically into the plaque within the penis. The anti-inflammatory properties of PRP are ideal for wound healing and tissue repair, thus plaque reduction. However, PRP is a newer treatment and while promising, it still lacks large-scale randomized trials to confirm its full efficacy. 
But most probably, that's an academic question. If you suffer from Peyronie's disease now, you probably don't want to wait 30 years until we have more data. As I said, I hit the occasional jackpot with that approach. In many men, curvature remains unchanged, however, but pain subsides reliably with my treatment approach, erectile function becomes much better, and also penile shrinking is reverted. So far, I have only seen one patient progress in his condition despite immediate treatment. I think this is also an important point, because even if curvature remains unchanged, the process may be stopped at a point where function still is largely unrestricted. Calcified plaques are very challenging and my experience with them is not good. What can be done in these cases is to try to stop the disease as soon as possible. If the angulation exceeds 60 degrees, function will be compromised in most men. In these cases, surgery is inevitable. And as I said in the beginning, it should be done in the stable phase. If this is your first time hearing about Peyronie's disease and you'd like to learn more, check out the playlist packed with informative videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.